Hi, this is Sudeep and I welcome you back to this wonderful journey of learning structure analysis with Stack Pro. In the last session, we had discussed about the beta zero configuration of the local access system for members that were parallel to the global X axis and the global Y axis. In this session, we will talk about the beta zero configuration of the local axis for members that are parallel to global Z and for more general case where the member is not parallel to any of the global axis. But before we go forward, please do take a moment to hit the subscribe button and join us in this wonderful journey if you are new to this channel. And for the old time subscribers, please do hit the like button if you are already getting value out of this series. Let us consider this beam to be defined from node 1 to node 2, parallel to the global Z axis. Thus, the local X axis is defined from node 1 to node 2. To identify the beta 0 condition, we have to set one additional condition which will help us to define the third axis. In this case, the additional condition is that the positive direction of the local Y axis is considered in the same direction as the positive direction of the global y axis like this. Now we know that the cross product of local x vector to the local y vector will give us the positive direction of the local z vector. Identifying by the right hand thumb rule, the local z direction is identified like this. We see that the positive direction of the local z axis is aligned to but opposite to the positive direction of the global x. However, if the same beam is parallel to global z but is created from node 2 to node 1, the local x axis will be like this. The beta 0 configuration is determined by still placing the local y parallel to the global y such that the positive direction is the same. So as per the right hand thumb rule, the local z will be aligned parallel to the global x such that the positive direction of the local z and global x is the same. So let us quickly verify whatever we have just learned. So I have created two beams that are parallel to the global z axis. And if we now switch on the node numbers by pressing shift plus n and then the beam number pressing by pressing shift plus p. And now let us refer to the member incidences table here. And we can see that beam one has been created between node one and node two, where node one is the start node, node two is the end node. And member two has been situated or created between node three and node four, where node three is the start node, node four is the end node. So we can now switch on the member orientation. And let us also switch on the global uh, axis at the origin so that it gives you a clearer picture of how the global axis is arranged with respect to the beam. So press Shift plus I to switch on the global X axis. Uh, sorry, the global axis system. Now, what we see that, um, that local for beam number one, the local axis is pointing from node one to node two as expected. And the local y axis has been set parallel to the global y axis, as we have just said. And the local z axis is thus created from the right hand thumb rule from local x to local y and has been created in a direction that is opposite to the positive direction of the global x. Similarly for node 2, we have local x defined from node 3 to node 4 as expected. The local y axis is created parallel to the global y axis and thus the right hand thumb rule gives the local z in a direction as we had expected and which is parallel to the positive direction of the global x-axis. So far, we had been investigating the beta zero configuration of members which were parallel to one of the global axis. 
However, it's not necessary that the members in a Start Pro model would necessarily be parallel to a one of the global axis. So what would be the beta zero configuration of those members which are not parallel to any of the global axis? Well, let us find out. So let us consider this member situated between node one and two with coordinates two zero one and 530 respectively. Node 1 is on the XZ plane while node 2 is on the XY plane. The nodes have been purposely chosen to simplify the visualization, but whatever we are going to discuss is not necessarily restricted to this. This would be applicable to any case where the member is not per parallel to any of the global axis. In case you have a confusion on the conception of global planes, you can visit one of the earlier sessions in this series by clicking on the link that is appearing on the screen right, right now. With one being the start node and two being the end node, the local x vector is identified to be pointing from node one to node two. Now consider a vector parallel to the vector resembling the positive direction of the global y-axis and is set with its tail at the tail of the local x axis like this. Now, we can always identify a plane that can accommodate the two vectors like this. Now, if we take the cross product from local x vector to the displaced global y vector in the plane that accommodates the two vector, we will be able to identify the positive direction of the local z vector like this which will thus be perpendicular to the plane identified. Now, let us look at the whole arrangement from the top. The global y-axis is not visible to us as expected. The plane identified on which we did the cross product would look like this. The local x-axis would look like this. Note that this would not be parallel to the global xz plane and the points within the members has changing y coordinates along with the changing x and z coordinates. The local z axis would be perpendicular to the identified plane like this. Now, the cross product of the local z to local x vector would give the positive direction of the local y vector. Now, to get a complete sense of the beta zero local axis system for this case, let us look at the front view. Note that in this case, the global z axis will not be visible. So this is how the local x, local y, and local z will appear from the front view. The local z axis will be parallel to the global xz plane, but would be inclined to both the global x and global z axis as it would be perpendicular to the identified plane. Now let us look at the same beam that we had been discussing, but within the start pro environment. As we can see, that this beam is already modeled and has been formed between nodes 1 and nodes 2 with coordinates 201 and 530 respectively. Currently, we are looking at the default isometric view with the local axis orientation switched on. So let us go and look at the top view and we'll see that our view is as we had shown just a few minutes back. It is as expected. Now, if we again look at the front view of the beam, we see that the view is as expected. So let us read us rediscuss the steps of getting the beta zero local axis orientation when the member is not parallel to any global axis. So step number one is to identify the local x axis. Step number two is to set a vector parallel to the global y axis at the tail of the local x axis vector. Then we need to identify the plane that can accommodate both the local x axis and the vector parallel to the global y axis do a cross product from local x to the vector parallel to the global y axis to identify the positive direction 
of the local z axis. The local z axis will be perpendicular to the plane identified. Now, do a cross product from local z to local x in a plane that we can accommodate both the local z and local x axis to get the positive direction of the local y axis. And thus, we identify the beta zero local axis orientation of any member which is not parallel to any global axis. An important thing to note is that this law will hold good for all other cases we have discussed, even for members which are parallel to global axis, but only it does not hold when the member is parallel to the global y axis. I hope you have a clear understanding by now about the beta zero configuration of the local axis system of members in STAT Pro. If you have any questions, do ask them in the comment section below. And I hope you have enjoyed the video today. If you have, please do hit the like button and please do join us in the next one. Till then, bye.